Hey, this is Horner, and I'm hoping that this video will help you understand the parallel axis theorem just a little bit better. Uh, so what we're going to do is let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on in this situation. So we have a uh, rod, and uh, there's a crate on one side, and we know on the other side there is this uh, just kind of wire. And so it's holding everything in equilibrium which is good, and then we're going to cut that wire and the whole thing's going to rotate. So the first thing we have to think about is, which way is this going to rotate? Well, hopefully you'll see that it should rotate clockwise. Now, why is it going to rotate clockwise? It's going to rotate clockwise because when we cut the wire, we have more mass on the right side than we do on the left side. So if it uh, if it's going to go clockwise, then uh, that's part of the part of the issue that I think some people have with it. The other thing that we need to do is kind of take a look at uh, some distances because the distances can be really confusing for this. Um, this whole thing is 3.6 meters long. So half of 3.6 is going to be 1.8. So I know that this position is 1.8. Uh, this position is 0.95 as measured from the left side. And then we also need the distance from here to here, which is going to be 1.8 minus 0.95. So that gives you 0.85. And then we also have a distance from the pivot point over to the crate. And so that's going to be, um, that's going to be our 1.8 plus 0.85. And so the distance from here to the crate is 2. 0.65. So those are all of our measurements that we need. We know we have 0.95 here, 0.85 from here, 2.65 here, and then 1.8 is that center mark. Now the important part of this is looking at uh, this little guy right here. This is 0.85. This is the distance from the center of mass. So that's the center of mass of the rod itself over to the pivot point. And so we're going to use that here in just a second. We want to know a couple of things. First thing we have to do is we have to find the moment of inertia of the board itself. And that is equal to, so the parallel axis theorem basically just says that if I take a, uh, a long rod and I put it down through the center of this uh, bar. So for example, let's just do this. If I take a rod and I stick it right down in the center, so you'll have to kind of imagine this in three dimensions. So I'm going to turn it to the side. So this is from the top, okay, um, looking down at a rod, and then this would be looking at it from the side. And from the side, that rod would go down through it, and let's say that it can pivot on the rod. So when it spins, we know that it's spinning kind of like this. It's in that direction. Um, if you take a ruler and you put it on top of a pencil and you spin it, that's kind of what you're seeing. From the top, we know that it's just kind of spinning in a circle like this. And notice that it is spinning about the center of mass. When you do that, the center of mass, the moment of inertia for this is 1 12th ml squared. Uh, if you want to know why it's 1 12th ml squared, then what you can do is take a look at hyperphysics. And hyperphysics goes through how to derive that. And so we'll do that later on in the week. The, uh, the thing that happens to this, though, is we're shifting over to point P. So look, let's just look at this one. Okay, so let's get rid of, well, no, let's leave that. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one. And we'll do it down here. Now I have moved that pivot point. So if I look at it, I've moved that pivot point over here. So here's my pivot point. Here's my original center of mass. And because I've moved the pivot point over, I need to know the distance from here to here because everything is going to follow the center of mass as it rotates. If I take this uh, board and I throw it through the air, so here I am, and I'm going to grab a hold of the board. So here's this, this piece of wood. And I'm going to throw it, and I know it's really big. When I throw it, let's say that it rotates. So the top end, and it's rotating in this direction as I throw it. So as I throw it, the center of mass is going to follow a really nice parabola that I can't draw. But you will see the object 
uh, will always be rotating about that center of mass. So it's going to be rotating here, um, maybe over here it's in this position. But as it goes, notice that that center of mass is always where it's rotating about. So we'll do it one more time over here. Alrighty, so it's still rotating about that center of mass. If we have this object and it's pivoting here, it still is going to have a central rotating point, and that point is the distance from the pivot point to the center of mass. So that's why we have to use the parallel axis there. If you notice, uh, when we look at the center of mass point, it's here. Let's say we move the pivot here. So what we're doing is we're taking and we're adding another point where we could pivot this. And these two rods are parallel, hence the parallel axis theorem. So it all depends on where that center of mass is. So hopefully that kind of helps maybe just a little bit. Um, let's go ahead and get rid of everything that we have here. So I'm going to select that and delete it. And let's go back up and try to work this problem one more time. Okay, so this is the one that was on the quiz. And um, if I want to know the moment of inertia, notice it's just of the board. It's not of the crate also yet. So let's just do this for the board. The moment of inertia equation, according to parallel axis theorem, is I for total or for the parallel axis theorem is equal to I about the center of mass. And so we know that the rotational inertia of the board around its center is 1 12th. And then to that, we're going to add the moment of inertia at the point in question, okay? So I'm going to put a question mark. And typically what this is is I center of mass plus MR squared or MD squared. You'll see a lot of different ways that they do that. And that's basically just the distance, okay, to that point, to that center of mass point. Um, and uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So it's from the pivot to the center of mass. So for ours, it's going to be 0.85 because that's from the new pivot to the center of mass because we're no longer pivoting on the center of mass. So this is going to be ICM plus M, and let's just call it D squared. And so this is going to be our little D right here. Um, center of mass is 1 over 12 M L squared. So remember, this is the total length. So we ignore the pivot, we just say it's the total length, plus uh, we have m times that distance squared. So let's go ahead and um, let's plug some numbers in here. So this is equal to 1 over 12, and then we need the mass of the board. So the mass of the board is not 100. It's 100 divided by gravity, so this would be 100 divided by 10. And now we need the entire length of the board and the entire length is 3.6 meters and we're going to square it plus the mass again um, of the board which is 100 divided by 10 and now we want this distance which is from the pivot point okay which is right here back to the center mass of the entire board so when we do that, we've got 0.85. How did we get 0.85 squared again? Because remember, this is 1.8 centimeters from the edge, okay? Um, and we've got 0.95 meters here. So this distance right here is 0.95. Let's just do that in red. This is 0.95. We know the entire thing is 1.8. So the difference is going to be this 0.85. So now that we have all of our numbers, we can find out that the moment of inertia of the board is equal to 18.03 kilograms times a meter squared. And that's always your unit. No matter what the moment of inertia, uh, whatever the object is, that is your moment. Now, we've got the moment of inertia of the board. We also need the moment of inertia of the crate. So let's do that in red. If I want the moment of inertia of the crate, okay, so we're just going to put crate here that's going to be equal to, we're treating this as a point particle. So we're treating it as just a dot, okay? So all the mass is centered right here, and it is rotating, notice, from this point over to this point. We said that was 2.65. So the moment of inertia of the crate is equal to the mass of the crate 
times the distance it is from the pivot, okay? So from the pivot, not from the center of mass, but from the pivot squared. So this is going to be equal to 300, which is the uh, weight of the crate or the force of the crate, divided by 10. And now we're going to multiply that times 2.65 squared, because remember that's the distance from the pivot to the crate itself. If you do all that math, you're going to get 210.7 kilograms times a meter squared. So how do we find out what the total moment of inertia is for our entire system? Well, all we have to do now is just add the board and the crate moments, and we'll end up finding out what that is. Somebody earlier had asked me, can I go ahead and just put this in this equation? Sure. So if I wanted to make this I total, I could say I total is equal to I center or mass for the board plus the mass of the board times the distance from the center of mass to the pivot squared. And then to that I would add the mass of the crate times the distance squared from the crate to the center of mass. Um, so you could do it that way and then do all these things, but I like to break it up, makes it a little bit easier. So I told her for us is just going to be the moment of inertia of the board that we found using the parallel axis theorem. Uh, and then we are adding to that the moment of inertia of the crate when it is at 2.65 meters from the pivot point. So this is going to be equal to 18.03 plus 210.7, and you're going to end up with 228.73 kilograms times a meter squared. So that's how to find the parallel axis theorem number for the moment of inertia. So we know kind of what its inertia is when it rotates. If I move the crate to the left, my moment of inertia is going to be less. And that's because I've made this number smaller. Nothing else has changed except for this number right here, and I've made it smaller. If I wanted to increase the moment of inertia and I don't have any more room to move, I could add mass to the crate. And that would make the moment of inertia of the system even bigger. So those are some things to think about as you go through. If we suppose that that wire breaks and the board begins to pivot about point P, they want us to calculate the magnitude of the initial angular acceleration of the entire system. So of the board and the crate. So let's go ahead and we're going to change. Uh, let's go over to purple. Um, if you're having trouble seeing this because you're colorblind, uh, probably the best thing to do is switch your colors on your computer to black and white or grayscale and that'll help a little bit too, but hopefully you can see this. All right, so now we've got to think about if this is rotating, what's happening? So to figure out what's going on while it's rotating, let's go ahead and just redraw it. So here's our board, here's the crate. We know that the pivot point is right here, so we'll just put an arrow there. And this whole thing, when it rotates, always rotates from the center of mass, which for the board would be right here and the center mass of the box, which would be right here. So there are only two things we have to really worry about and how they rotate. So we're going to do some of the torques is equal to the moment of inertia times the uh, angular acceleration. Well, we already know the moment of inertia because the moment of inertia is what we found earlier for the system. So that goes here. We're looking for this. So all we need to do is find the sum of the torques. So the torques for these two things, remember, is going to be the force of the object, which is just the board here, times it, uh, its distance from the pivot point. For this one, it's going to be the force of the crate times the distance to, from the crate to the pivot point. So we're going to put B here and B here. Now that I have these two things, I can plug them into the sum of the torques. So this would be the force of the board times the distance to the pivot point from the center of mass, plus, and now we've got uh, the force of the crate times the distance to the center of mass from the crate, and that's going to be equal to I times alpha. Now somebody said, don't I need to make these negative? Yes, you could make both of these negative, and in the end, your acceleration is going to be negative because it is an angular acceleration rotating uh, in a clockwise direction. So if you want to do that absolutely positively, please do so. Otherwise, we're just going to leave it this way, um, and we're just going to find 
the magnitude because it did ask us to find the magnitude and not the direction. And remember, direction is actually going to be using the right hand rule. So we don't want to go there either. At this point, we don't need to. Uh, force of the board. Well, the force of the board has got to be equal to the, uh, the mass times gravity of the board. And they already told us that. They said that it has a weight of 100 newtons. So that's what we're going to plug in. Down here, this is going to be 100. I don't know why that circle stayed where it did. That's really weird. Um, ooh, and I don't know why that 100 stayed where it is. Okay, so something's, oh, there we go. Now it's fixed. So it's 100. And then remember the distance from the center of the board over to the pivot point we said was 0.85. And that's because when we come back up here, notice that's what we found here. It was 1.8 minus 0.95, and that's 0.85. To that, we're going to add the force of the crate. We know that the weight of the crate is 300, and the radius there is 2.65. And that's equal to 228.73. Remember, that was our moment of inertia here times alpha. Now, take your time, do your math. And if you do your math really well, you'll find out that alpha is equal to 3.85 radians per second squared. Yay. Now we found the uh, magnitude of the initial angular acceleration of the board crate system. They want us now to find the magnitude of the initial linear acceleration of the left end of the board. So here we go again. We've got our system set up. We've got our pivot point. Here's our center of mass. Here's our other center of mass. They want to know what is the acceleration in a line. So they want to know what is the acceleration here. We're also going to find the acceleration of this side. But let's do this one first since it's the one that they want. And we know that that is A is equal to alpha times R. So that's equal to 3.85 times 0.95. Now, why did we use 0.95? Because that is the distance from the pivot point to the left end of the board. And that's what they ask us to do. So if you do that, you're going to end up with 3.66 meters per second squared. So if you measured the acceleration tangent to the line, it would be 3.66. Let's do the same thing. So let's just do that in red just so we can see it. Let's do the same thing on this side. So we could even find the linear acceleration of the car, of the crate, uh, but we'll just say it's the right side of the board. That's equal to alpha times r. Now alpha stays the same because remember it takes the same amount of time for this end of the board to go all the way around as it does for this end of the board to go all the way around. However, the linear acceleration is going to be greater. And why is it greater? Well, because we know that from the pivot point, so from here over to the right end of the board, our distance is 2.65 meters. So it's going to be a lot bigger. So this is 2.65 and that is our R. So I'm going to get out my handy dandy calculator here since I hadn't done this one yet. Uh, in terms of finding my answer, 3.85 times 2.65, and that gives me 10.2. So it has a much higher linear acceleration, 10.2 meters per second squared. And that is how you should think about parallel axis theorem for a long theorem board that has a pivot point not at the center of mass and has a crate hanging on the other end. Hopefully that's helpful.